We have a new really cool hook that we can use in conjunction with server actions when you work with a form. So it's called use form status. It's still experimental at the time of recording. But what it allows us to do is when I submit something here, let's say I say test, you can see there is some feedback here. There's a pending state that we can easily add to our server actions. And then finally it's added to our database and it's shown on the UI here and it's automatically going back to the normal state. So let's see how we can add that here to our example here. Here we have a simple page. It's just fetching all the to-dos from my database. I'm using Prisma. We have an H1. We have the actual form. And then it's mapping over the to-dos here. Right? That's what we see here. All right, so I'm using server actions here. So what you can do in Next.js, you have the action attributes and you can add to-do. That's my server action. And then what we want to do is we want to display some pending state on the button here or some other way. But let's take the button as an example. So I'm importing the hook here, but actually that's not going to work. So if you have a form and you want to use that use form status hook in the form, it needs to be a descendant of the form. So we need to refactor this button in this case to a separate component. Let's quickly do that. I will quickly create a button component, button, and I will say button. And I'm just going to paste the button code to this component here. Our right, button is now here. And button needs to be a client component. Right, so this is some client interactivity. That's not possible in server components. So we're going to mark this as a client component. And then we can just replace this JSX here with our custom component. I need to import this. Right, so now the button is a descendant of this form where the server action is being used. So now we can go to the button here. And we can actually import it from here. I don't need this import. So let's say use form status. It's experimental so you're going to get this weird name we can alias that as use form status so we can just use it like that and what it's going to give us is the pending state of that form so we can just call it like this it also gives us some other things like the action so the server action the the function that you run uh, the data of the form and also the method it's going to be a post method in this case usually that's not really useful at least i haven't found any good use cases for that so you just want to use pending here and actually one good use case for pending here as well is to use it for the disabled attribute here so we want to disable the button so the user cannot accidentally you know submit it twice so we can already use it for that but of course we also want to give some visual indicator that something is going on so we can say if it's pending we want to change the text to adding dot 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 otherwise well let's just make it add all right so now i've saved here and now let's say i will say test two and let's see what happens and now you can see we have this pending state eventually it gets added to our list here and the pending state is reverted to the normal state right so these hooks in combination with server actions are really powerful it removes a lot of boilerplate because in the past you may maybe had some kind of state variable like uh, is submitting right is submitting and then before you you make a call to the back end you would set is submitting to true and then after to false right so a lot of boilerplate that you had to write in the past this simplifies things a lot and this is really the future of forms right in Next.js with the server actions and these hooks that you get with it I have other videos on the server actions make sure you check them out and if you really want to become a professional React Next.js developer I have a course on that highly recommend you go through that. In any case, make sure you've mastered the fundamentals. Those are both JavaScript as well as CSS. I have courses on them too. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next one. Bye.